This is the build video for the 5-pin breakout cable used with Endora and other microphones which use a 5-pin to dual 3-pin breakout cable. Basically we have a 5-pin female connector that plugs into the microphone. That splits out the two normal 3-pin male XLR connectors that plug into a recorder or a microphone preamp. They share a common ground and that all pin 1s are connected together. Here are the parts for the build. The cable mount connectors, one 5-pin female, two 3-pin male. A white and red XLR boot to easily identify the signals coming out of the microphone. And 10 feet or so of two-channel snake cable and some heat shrink tubing. See the YouTube video description for a PDF guide with the bill of materials in it. The first step is to wiggle the XLR boot over the two-channel cable. This takes some finagling. Slide it back a few inches to allow a clean work area. Using a single edge razor blade, carefully cut back the outer sleeving and expose the two inner signal cables. Both are twisted pair shielded cables. Trim those and prep as shown. Channel 1 has a brown hot wire and channel 2 a red hot wire. Both have a white neutral wire. Twist the shields together. Interestingly, most multi-channel snake cables follow resistor color codes as does this one. Brown 1, red 2, and so on. Prep the 5-pin XLR insert by tinning all the solder cups. We're going to connect ground to pin 1, brown to pin 2, channel 1 white to pin 3, red to pin 4, and channel 2 white to pin 5. Inspect your work. This is important. Now slide the strain relief on the cable. This is a bit of a challenge but doable. Note how it lines up to the insert. Slide the outer housing on. It has a slot in it that is aligned to the insert and the strain relief clamp. You'll see just a bit of the strain relief sticking out. Slide up the XLR boot and screw it on. Alright, the hard part is finished. Prep the two 3-pin XLR cable ends. Start by measuring about 15 to 16 inches back based on the amount of thin heat shrink tubing you have. The length that you make here depends on how close the XLRs need to be while plugging into a recorder or audio interface. I leave enough so they can easily go to both sides of a Zoom F6 recorder. When you have the distance marked, carefully use a single edge razor blade and slit the outer cable covering without cutting through the two inner cables. Slice along the outer sleeving enough to allow you to split it by pulling the outer sleeve along the cable. Slide the two 8 inch pieces of heat shrink tubing on the two inner cables. Make note of which one is channel 1 and which one is channel 2. Using a hot air gun, shrink them down onto the cables. Let cool and then slide the 3 inch piece of heat shrink tubing over the entire cable and center it on the junction of the full cable sleeving and the two inner cables. Shrink that down with a hot air gun. Prep the inner two cables to the point you know which one has the brown wire, channel 1, and which has the red wire, channel 2. Slide the white XLR boot over the channel 1 and the red XLR boot over channel 2. Tin the solder cups of both 3-pin XLR inserts. Solder each inner cable to its insert. Channel 1, ground to pin 1, brown to pin 2, and white to pin 3. For channel 2, it's ground to pin 1, red to pin 2, and white to pin 3. Place the cable strain relief over the cable and align with the XLR insert as shown. Then insert this into the metal XLR shell until just a bit of strain relief is showing. Slide the XLR boot up and screw the assembly together. Repeat for the second XLR connector. Congratulations! You are now finished, so let's test this puppy. Check the front, check the rear, check one, two.